<laughs> Shao Kahn. Yes. Fatality. Hello and welcome to round 40 of Wake Up 3. Big 4-0. We are your hosts, Molly. And Cam. And we are a fighting game podcast from a couple who loves fighting games. That is right, and we are starting things off as usual with a mix-up. Okay, so I know that we're doing a Tekken episode today. I had a couple of, of tournaments that I was going to choose from to do my mix-up around, and one of them was a Tekken tournament, so I didn't end up doing that. I guess that way we can give a little contrast. So I've got right, some MK1 right. Okay, tournament. cool, cool, cool. Tournament stuff. Over the weekend, there was a, another big old MK1 Pro Comp qualifier. So this was the North American Regional Qualifier number two. So once again, we have the East Side and the West Side. So two different top eights. So would you like to start with the East or the West? We're going to see how you do in guessing the characters played. I'm scared. And then I have like some extra things to pepper in there for fun. Okay. Well, (laughs) I guess let's go with the East because we're, I I feel like we're closer to the East. So let's, yeah, let's start there. Let's do the East. Okay. So I went and got all of this information myself. It was not readily available anywhere. Which is fine, but I'm just letting you know. I got it all. It's right here. It's a Wake Up 3 exclusive, baby. (laughs) I would say there's a lot of the same. There's a lot of overlap. Let's try Raiden. Raiden was played not once, not twice, not three times, four times. Dang. Okay, wow. I feel like there was a surprising amount, and maybe this is just an MK1 thing, maybe this is just an MK thing, but I feel like there was a surprising amount of switching around in this tournament. Johnny Cage. Yes, Johnny was used three times. Let's go Liu Kang. Liu Kang was also used three times. There's a lot of, a lot of usage here. There is. Let's go... Kung Lao. No Kung Lao. Hmm. I'm gonna do a wild card and just throw Lee Mei out there. No Lee Mei. Okay. I, I I wasn't really sure on that, but you know, I figured I'd throw it out there because she's got some real big damage. I feel like pros don't really talk about her too much though. I don't know what it is. Maybe she's just kind of downplayed at the moment and we'll see something later down oh. the line. But I got Ashra. No Ashra. No Ashra. Oh my goodness. Melina. No Molina in the East. Katana. No Katana in the East. No Tanya. Yes, Tanya. What? Do you want to hear something crazy? Yeah, tell me. I have to tell you it after you finish guessing this topic. Oh my gosh, okay. (laughs) I'll tell you before the West, though. Because it's about the East. Sounds good. Natara. Nope. Are there any other ladies? No. Okay. Garrus. No. Sub-Zero. No. Scorpion. No. Smoke. Nope. (laughs) What the heck? There's no way there's rain or reptile. I'm just not even going to guess them. Wild card. Omni-Man. No. Okay. Sorry. I I haven't seen a lot of high-level Omni-Man. And I feel like not anymore. Kenshi. Kenshi. Kenshi was used twice. Gotcha. Two times. Reiko. Yes. Really? Yes. Okay. And I still have one more now? <laughs> yeah. You have one more. Shao Kahn. No. Damn. Shang Tsung? No. Sindel? No. Who else is even on the roster? I feel like I've guessed everybody at this point. Havoc? No. Why would your mind go to Havoc? <laughs> I don't know. Who else is on the roster? I think I've guessed like 50 people at this point. Oh my god. Is it Peacemaker? No. I feel like he wouldn't be allowed yet. I don't know. Quan Chi. No. You were you were looking at me like I am a fool. Am I gonna feel like a fool? Yes, I'm surprised you're still going. 
Who else is on the roster, babe? That's what you keep saying. That's what you keep asking me. <laughs> but I really don't know. I feel like I've guessed every person. Here's your hint, hint. based on okay. this competition. Okay. This character was chosen first by the player who then chose Tanya. I have no idea. Well, buckle your Mortal Kombat seatbelts because scared. you just got your brand new backup character. Because they played Baraka. Oh my gosh. How it did was... I not pick Baraka? <laughs> hmm. Okay. Well, I play Baraka. Exactly. What the heck? That was the Mighty Unjust who took fifth place. Okay, and he switched he to st- Tanya? Yeah, so he gotcha. started out with Baraka Striker, switched against Pure, who played Raiden Kano, but switched to Kenshi Cyrax versus the Mighty Unjust. Mighty Unjust switched to Tanya after losing as Baraka and played Tanya Goro. A lot of hands. I was like, wait, someone's playing Tanya because I feel like last time I did one of these, you were like, is there a Tanya? And I was like, no, there's definitely not. Nobody has really played Tanya. I feel like I haven't really seen any sort of Tanya representation. And then boom, here at number five in the East. So sweet. That's awesome. Yep. And then carried that to his next match against Pulse. And then finally switched to Raiden and Chameleon. I feel like mm. Mighty Unjust was all over the place. Yeah, very That's weird. so many switches, isn't it? That's a lot of people. That's, <laughs> That's a lot of people, too. Yeah, like not just switching. That's a but... lot. Yeah, wow. Huh. So first place was Ninja Killer with Liu Kang and Chameleon in the grand finals. Sweet. That's cool. Initially, he played Raiden Kano in the mm. winners' finals, mm. and then he went back to Liu Kang and Lao, which is like his regular setup, I guess. I feel like Chameleon yeah. in the grand finals was kind of a what's this duo? Yeah, that was but, like a, probably like a secretly practiced thing. Yeah, so even Ninja Killer had a little bit of variety and cool. switched off here and there. The Raiden Kano specifically was a mirror match. Hmm. Second place was Zombat playing as Johnny with Goro. And then he also played as Raiden Kano in that mirror match against okay. Ninja Kilo. Gotcha. Then he went back to Johnny Goro, and that was it. And third place was Get Wrecked, Yo, with Liu Kang, Lao. Very popular combination, Liu Kang, Lao. But he also played as Johnny Lao. The more rare thing is someone not switching off. <laughs> That's, we'll just say that. In fourth place was Pulse with Kenshi and Sub-Zero. But he also played Johnny Lau. Wow. And then fifth place we talked about the Mighty Unjust playing Baraka Striker and also Tanya Goro and also Raiden Chameleon. Also in fifth place is Joystick playing Liu Kang and you guessed it, Kung Lao. Who else would it be? <laughs> In seventh place was Silence Return. I don't know this name. Playing Reiko Trimmer. Hmm. Okay, cool. Interesting team. And then also in seventh place was Pure playing something not so pure. <laughs> Raiden Oof. Kano. Oh boy. But also Kenshi Cyrax. Okay, I still don't enjoy fighting Kenshi. But yeah. I noticed that through all of this, there's a lot of the same character choice. Let's go to the West. <laughs> okay, let's go to the West. And see if you can guess the top eight characters used. Raiden. Johnny. <laughs> Hold on, slow down. Oh boy. Catchy. I want to count how many there are oh, every time. Oh shit. There's oh. not a Raiden in the West. That's they said, get out of here. We don't like storms. Cool. I like Rain that. scares us. I appreciate it. Rain scares us. We're the West. Johnny. Johnny. Yes, there was Johnny. No shortage of Johnny. There were probably extra in Hollywood, it's right? The West. Yeah, we're the West. We don't like storms, but we love Johnny Cage. We love actors. We're the West. We've got <laughs> one. We've got two Johnnies, okay. and the Johnnies are both Johnny Goro. Johnny Goro. Cool. Yeah. It's a fun pairing. There was also Johnny Goro on the east side. So there's a little bit of a lack of creativity to it once people figure out who goes best with who. They all just follow the same route. And it's kind of a bummer because it I feel like the point of, point of cameos is to be more creative. But Yeah. 
back to your guesses. Hmm. Kenji. Kenji. No Kenji. Lu Kang. <laughs> no Lu Kang. Striking out. Let's go Sindel, I guess. Let's try that. There's definitely Sindel. Just one? Just one. Okay. <laughs> How about Katana? There's no Katana. Reiko. There is Reiko. There's a lot of Reiko. So there's... Like six Reikos? <laughs> there's someone pulling there's out the door. There's someone just breaking the door down. There are three Reikos in the West. That's a lot of Reikos. That is a lot of Reikos. That's like Liu Kang numbers in the East. What's up with that? It's more Reikos than you would expect or probably want to see. Kung Lao. No Kung Lao. Oh. What's the deal? Are there any ninjas? No. No ninjas or anybody that could potentially be like confused as a ninja? Well, maybe in that regard. Rain? No. Let's go Garrus. Let's try Garrus. No. Oh my gosh. Ashra. No. People are like, Ashra's top three and yet somehow no one plays her in tournaments? What's the deal with that? Who am I missing? Are there any other ladies? Yes. N- Nitara. The, yes, there is really? Nitara. <laughs> okay, so, hmm, Nitara. Melina. Yes, there is Melina. I am on it. Are there any other ladies, or is that Nope, it? there's just one more. More than the East, anyways. Yep, hmm. definitely. Three to one. Yeah. <laughs> Shao Kahn. Yes. Really? Wow. On the money right there at the end. Was this it the pressure? I don't, maybe it was just the pressure. <laughs> yeah, this is going to sound fake. <laughs> anybody just anybody listening to this is going to be like, wow, there's no way he guessed all three of those things right in a row. I, did, uh, I actually did, though. You did? I actually did, yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah, I got it. Hell yeah. The winner, the number one spot in the West, went to Our Glass of Rain, hmm. playing as Molina. I guess they were a fan of rain in the west well they were definitely scared of rain because rain took it all they were definitely a fan of hourglasses with molina and kung lao i Mm. would guess that the top two cameo usage would be lao and maybe goro just because of all the Mm. johnny goros then we have second place king gambler with johnny goro cool and then third place went to Sonic Fox using Natara and Chameleon at first in okay. the win- in the winners semifinals and Sindel and Lao and then also Natara and Lao. Hmm. Okay. But uh, this was kind of a surprise when Sonic Fox switched back to Natara. Ketchup noted that this was odd because Lao was chosen instead of Chameleon. Hmm, Which apparently okay. is the only cameo Sonic Fox has ever used, hmm. I guess publicly, with Natara. Hmm. So it was... A little bit of a fake out. Yeah, it was like, oh, is this... Is this some tech? Is this on purpose? Number four was Han Rashid playing Reiko and Trimmer. And then fifth place went to Rewind, also playing Reiko Trimmer. But Rewind okay, cool. did switch to Shao and Sub-Zero. Interesting. Okay. And then from Sub-Zero as Cameo to Lao as Cameo with his Shao Kahn. More Lao. General Shao, pardon me. Also taking fifth place was Dexy Dog using Melina Serena, but also using Reiko Trimmer. The only Reiko combination you can trust. That's what I've been thinking while we've been talking about this. A lot of Reiko Tremor. <laughs> Yeah, Dexy Dog was normally playing Molina Serena. Okay. But in the losers' quarterfinal against Han Rashid, they made it a mirror match, so it was a lot of Reiko on screen and a lot of trimmer. <laughs> but that didn't go well for Dexy Dog, so he switched back to Molina in the end. And then in seventh place, we've got CJ the Spaceman playing Johnny Goro. He nice. went out playing Johnny Goro. No switching. You gotta respect it. I feel like, just because yeah. it's the more rare option. Also, seventh place was Violet okay. playing Melina Goro. So there was a lot of Melina in the West, 
But I think the one unique thing about Melina players is they're all using a different cameo. Yeah. You've got Serena, you've got Goro, you've got Kung Lao. Yeah. At the top. That's crazy because I feel like what I usually see online is Melina Scorpion. Yeah, that's what I was just thinking too. I like the variety. So That rounds out the East and the West of the North American qualifier number two for the MK1 Pro Competition. Took place over the weekend online, of course. What do you think of the spread of characters? Well, I had fun guessing them, even though I was kind of terrible at it, honestly. (laughs) But I feel like the spread is sort of... I don't know. It's lacking a little bit, honestly. There's a decent amount of characters when you look at them all together. But all things considered, when there's close to 30 people on the roster, it's still not that big of of a grouping, you know what I mean? Yeah. All right, well, that's it. <laughs> that's the mix-up. That was fun. Yeah. All so, right, well, let's talk about our week in fighting games. I guess we should just do a little rundown of okay. all the games because there's been there's been a few. Yeah, I would agree. We played kind of all of the big three, I guess. Is it weird to call them did, the big three? I don't know, but did we? Did I play Street Fighter? Maybe you didn't. Maybe I not. think I did, but it was only like a couple of fights. Same thing with MK1. I did like a couple of fights. I Just played the most bit. Tekken. Yeah, yeah. I guess I guess you mostly stuck to Tekken. I played all three. I played quite a bit of Street Fighter. I, w- I was actually mostly playing DJ this week. I was straying from Jury a bit and played a lot of Baraka, MK1, and a ton of Kuma for Tekken. Not yeah. only that, we also played Killer <laughs> Instinct on the Super Nintendo. Yeah, we whipped out the old system. I originally just wanted to play some, you know, Donkey Kong or something. And Cam brought out several games to choose from, and among them was the Black Cartridge Killer Instinct. It's too and, cool to ignore. Yeah, it's such it was, a cool looking cartridge. It's like the best one. It stayed in the yes pile, and we played. And I got my butt kicked every character I chose, period, <laughs> with several... <laughs> Several stage fatalities, if you can call it that. Yeah, I don't know if that's exactly what they're called, but yeah, I definitely had a couple of those. This was just destruction. Yeah, I guess I was just feeling myself that day. I don't know what it was, but I know at one point you were like, what can this guy do when you were Cinder? And I don't even remember who I was at the time, but I was just laughing at myself thinking, Haha, I'll show you what Cinder can do. Yeah, and next I did. round was terrible. If you hear purring from this point forward it is because there's a sweet baby boy on the premises and there's nothing we can do about it anything else to say about it because i think i'm good if you are i think i'm good if i played like, like two fights as jamie i played like four fights as melina jacks and that was it the rest was tekken a lot of tekken and getting my butt kicked in killer instinct that's like basically the whole roster so there you go and now it is time for the episode, which I have no idea what it is about, aside from being a Tekken character. Yeah, I'm going to talk to you today about Raven. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have any ideas at all? Did you have any um, guesses or anything? I definitely didn't think it was Raven. Okay. Hmm. Like, that didn't cross my mind. Cool. Well, so, sweet. that's cool. Yeah, I'm going to talk to you today about Raven. His real name is unknown. His code name is just Raven. Okay. He likes justice, discretion, Victor Chevalier. Mistake, but all right, I'll accept it. And Lars Alexanderson. Redeemed. There you go. (laughs) Pretty cool. Sounds good to me. His dislikes are detection. (laughs) I think it's hilarious. Fair. Yeah, detection. Criminals, Sergei Dragunov, the Mishimas, Yoshimitsu, and G Corporation. Wow, that is quite a list. One of them I'm not, I can't get behind on. Is it Yoshimitsu? Yeah. The two of them are rivals. I would say it's nothing personal, but it's like exclusively <laughs> it's, personal. <laughs> it's completely personal. It's completely personal. They're like rival clans. <laughs> it's the most personal thing. Do you know what Raven looks like? I mean, I guess you know, you obviously know what Raven looks like. But <laughs> yeah. to the listener, do you know what Wesley Snipes looks like in the movie Blade? Because imagine Wesley Snipes and Blade 
but with his hair in Demolition Man. So just two Wesley Snipes characters combined into one. Yeah, you got that. And I actually have a quote about the way he looks. When Namco was asked about the similarities being intentional, they stated that they simply wanted a true ninjutsu practitioner and a cool black guy for a character, and that the similarities were purely coincidental. All right, let's go all the way back to 2004 with the release of Tekken 5. So Raven's actually been around for 20 years, which is kind of insane. That is crazy. That's a long time. We first meet Raven as he is watching Heihachi and Kazuya fight a swarm of Jack Force. <laughs> he's just watching them do this? Yeah, he's watching from a distance, from like a okay. mountaintop. This is actually in the <laughs> intro to the game. Every time you boot the game up, you'll see this like... Oh, you can just watch Raven watch them fight what? Jack, Jack Force? Yeah. You, you see that he's there at the end. You're like, who's this guy? Because he's brand oh. new to this game. You see, you see the Mishima is just fighting, and they've kind of teamed up a little bit, but eventually Kazuya grabs Heihachi and just shoves him to the ground, and all of the Jack robots, there's like 10 plus, just dogpile on top of Heihachi as Kazuya smirks and like climbs out a window. What? <laughs> yeah, they're not on the same side. So <laughs> Kazuya's kind of like, fuck that old man, slash my dad, because he's my dad. And bounces, yeah, he just chucks him to the ground, and all the jack robots dogpile Heihachi. And <laughs> as Kazuya's making his escape out a window or whatever, all the jack fours self-detonate. <laughs> and that's where Raven says... That's that's where Raven comes in. It, the camera zooms out, and it's this gigantic explosion, and... Raven, who we see for the very first time, looking through some binoculars, and he just says into his earpiece, Heihachi Mishima is dead. To, I guess, the rest of his Raven unit. After that, the King of the Iron Fist Tournament 5 is announced, which is pretty weird because Heihachi is dead. <laughs> They're like, ah, so, oh, just go ahead with it anyway. It was yeah, in the books already. Right, right. We paid for it. Yeah, we already paid for it. We already rented out the venue. Yeah, I don't get it. There's no host. Who's actually hosting this thing? Like, it was announced after Heihachi was dead. So, there's no It was host. like the year when there was no Oscars host, you know? <laughs> yeah, it was just one of those, like, pizza drones that you see on the sidewalk, <laughs> just, like, delivering pizzas. <laughs> Oscar the pizza drone. I don't know. Anyway, what? I don't, I don't know. I'm getting things mixed up. Right, back on track here. Heihachi is dead, so it's kind of weird that there's a tournament with no host. Or is there a host? Who knows? Either way, Raven enters the tournament to sneak around and figure out what's going on. During Raven's tournament run, one of his opponents turns out to be Heihachi Mishima. No way. Yep, he said yep. he was dead. Listen to this shit. Heihachi explains that when the Jack 4 file exploded on him, it sent him miles away. No way. That's what he that's what he said. He also said that he must have been on the verge of death for weeks, but he doesn't remember any of it. He just remembers crawling out of some ruins or some wreckage and making that's his way they... back here basically to figure out who's running this tournament. So that's why he's here too. He's like, I wanna figure out who's running this tournament and I'm gonna break their neck. That sounds pretty wild for somebody who spent weeks on their deathbed. And well, then, you know, their first mobile thought is, I have to enter my own tournament that someone else is putting on in my name and uh, kill them. Yeah. Just wanted to kind of gloss over a little Heihachi fun because that asshole really just adds some flavor into anything he touches. So is Raven shocked or does he beat him up? He's kind of surprised by this, but his mission from there is to, you know, just keep going in the tournament. So Raven defeats Heihachi. He's like, you're dead again. He's just kind of holding him and he's talking to his command and he's like, hey, I beat Heihachi. What do you want me to do with him? He's not like dead or anything. He's just beat, defeated. And his HQ responds over his headset and they're like, just leave him. Just leave him be. You've got new orders. The tournament organizer, Jin Pachi Mishima. Oh, shit. This sounds like the Tekken for me. Yeah, so Jin Pachi is back from the dead. And uh, yeah, if, if anyone doesn't know, Jin Pachi is Heihachi's dad. And he made some sort of deal with a straight up demon. And because of that, he's got like demon abilities. He's got a gigantic devil mouth forming on his stomach. And it shoots out laser beams. He's huge. 
He's got crazy hair. He's got crazy Mishima hair. And he's cool as heck. Jin's great-grandfather. Kazuya's grandfather. Hihachi's dad. And, yeah, he's here to wreck shit, apparently. He's That's, here to run shit. He's he was here to, front yeah. of a tournament. Yeah, he's, he's, <laughs> he came back to... <laughs> yeah. Jim Pachi came back to life to be a T.O. Yeah. And Hayashi's like, this is weird. I thought I sealed him underground because he was like a half-devil man. Not devil. Demon. I misspoke. He's a half-demon man. But yeah, if I don't see a Jim Pachi framed photo in every tournament or aspiring tournament organizer's office or bedside table, what are you doing? You're not aspiring very hard. Did you break out of your son's death cage to come back to life and run tournaments? Probably not. (laughs) Probably not. Respect. (laughs) He receives these new orders. Take down tournament organizer Jin Pachi Mishima. Raven reaches Jin Pachi, who is already in his like raging demon form not called that but you know raven's actually pretty surprised he doesn't understand that that's jin pachi he was expecting an old man he's like you're not even human i don't understand he straight up says like you're not even human because spooky up- i know right kind of weird <laughs> up until now he's only seen like robots exploding a dude miles away and him surviving and crawling his way out of rubble and fighting in a tournament and you know the usual the usual so seeing a man with a demon face on his chest that's a jump it's a jump he's like you're not even human you're not a regular old guy you're a demon old guy but he defeats jinpachi after defeating jinpachi jinpachi tells raven you did well before passing away in front of him oh and then raven jumps on top of a jet that is flying nearby and rides it away Bring that back. Whoa. Mission complete. He just stands on it. In the next game, he actually shows up by standing on the top of a jet. What? Well, it flies upside down. So he's standing upside down on it. No way. I don't know what the deal is with this guy. Why doesn't Raven have his own jet stage in Tekken 8? Maybe he should. Mission complete. So that is Tekken 5. Tekken 6, five years later, 2009. Raven is shown throughout the Tekken 6 story pretty frequently, actually. But the first time you see him, he's being a stealthy little spy, as usual, silently observing and passing information on to Lars and his unit. As kind of an informant that Lars doesn't know who this dude is. He just, you know what I mean? I don't know who Raven is. Raven's doing this on his own. Raven does have to jump in at some point, though, and introduce himself. When Lars and Elisa are being beaten up by a killer robot that's known as Nancy. Come on, you guys. Yeah. Yeah. They're getting their asses beat by this combat robot named Nancy. It's just annihilating them. And he's been watching from the shadows and like tracking them, tracking others, relaying information, all that kind of just, you know, working in the shadows, being a ninja. And then this starts happening and he's like, God damn it. Yeah. Slaps his laptop shut. Probably. Or just like climbs out his of a little, vent. His little spy laptop that's like really <laughs> heavy. Yeah. I was thinking he just like climbs out of a vent like Metal Gear Solid style because he was there the whole time. Well, Raven jumps out of his vent or wherever he is and defeats Nancy, the robot. And he meets up with Lars only to find him grieving over the destroyed body of Elisa. No. Yeah. So Lars is just... Oh, no. Why is it sad? Over, you know, he's beside himself, just grieving over the destroyed body of the robot friend, formerly known as Elisa. (laughs) Lars. You can just (laughs) fix her. It's fine. He doesn't know this. She's just annihilated. She's destroyed. She's a robot. It will be fine. She's like destroyed, I guess. It will be okay. blown apart. (laughs) Ripped apart. No limbs. (laughs) I know she, like, fires off her limbs as rockets sometimes, but it's different when they get destroyed. Like, mangled by another robot. Yeah. She's basically just a torso. He's just crying, just hugging this robot torso. I don't know if that's what's... I don't know if that's how it's working. But <laughs> let's go with that. So anyways, no more Elisa for now. I know she comes back eventually. Six is both Lars and Elisa's first game. How tragic. And they had this globe-trotting adventure until suddenly... <laughs> Elisa, the companion robot, gets mangled and destroyed by Nancy. So rude. I know, right? What's the deal? 
the fuck, hell, Nancy? Fuck Nancy. Who invited Nancy here? Yeah. Who wants Nancy the robot to come back as DLC? <laughs> season one? Season two? Any of it, I guess. Bring back Nancy. But murderer, we don't want her. <laughs> yeah, she's Nancy the robot. That's also a robot destroyer. <laughs> Nancy the robot, the robot destroyer. The robot killer robot. Wow. Raven and Lars go to the Middle East to chat with Safina. So Raven has now just joined up with Lars. So Raven and Lars go to the Middle East to chat with Safina, who tells them where to find the Temple of Azazel. At this point, she's just kind of a fortune teller. So they go to the Temple of Azazel, and Raven helps Lars defeat Azazel. He reaches into the chest of the fallen Azazel and pulls out, like, kind of a sphere. And that's like the core of Azazel, I guess. And that's what ends up giving Zafina her powers. She absorbs that into her arm. And oh, does she know she could do that? I don't know. Or was Raven just kind of like, yeah, I don't want this. And just like accidentally put it on her arm. I don't, I didn't, <laughs> I don't know where, I don't know where Zafina got it, okay. honestly. Okay. I just know that he like takes it once him and Lara's. I've done their thing and taken down Azazel, the giant weird demon beast. He's a huge demon beast. You you saw him in the Tekken 8 story. Yeah. He's he a giant did. beast. So yeah, they take him on. They beat him. And from there, we see the pair, Raven and Lars, driving in a jeep, taking Elisa's destroyed, mangled body to Violet Systems to be repaired by Lee Shaolin. Aww, I love it. Drew this is so crazy because I didn't know anything about Raven and remember in the very beginning of Tekken 8 how I was like, my three mains are <laughs> Lars, Lee, and Raven. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah, what? yeah, yeah. My yeah. mind is blown. I know, right? Yeah, one of the people he likes is Lars. He respects Lars. They rode After. in a jeep together. Yeah, they rode in a jeep together with a mangled robot. Heading to Lee's place. Hey, we're gonna he go can to- fix it. Hey, have you heard of this magnificent wizard named Lee Shalon? <laughs> He's just up the road. Let's drive our vehicle. Whose Jeep is it, I wonder? Who's driving? Is it Lars driving? It's pro- I'm just assuming it's Lars driving. I don't know for sure, but oh. I think Lars is probably driving. <laughs> okay. I'm just picturing Raven like crossing his arms in the passenger seat. Oh, see, I picture Raven driving. <laughs> I picture Raven driving and then Lars in the passenger seat holding the torso. <laughs> <laughs> Just crying. Yeah, still really sad. I feel like Raven's just gripping the steering wheel, frowning through his sunglasses. The way I saw it was <laughs> Lars was driving. Raven had his arms crossed in the front seat, just in the passenger seat next to him. Stern look. Elisa's mangled robot body just like draped over the back seat. Oh. Just like laying flat across the, the I thought whole you were gonna, seat. I thought you were going to say her Trunk. torso body is just like <laughs> bouncing all over the back because <laughs> It's not buckled in. It's just like rolling around violently on like sharp turns oh and goodness. stuff. Or here's another scenario. Oh if boy. Lars is driving. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> Raven is in the back seat taking a nap, laid down, probably arms still crossed. And the mangled torso of Elisa is seat belted into the front seat. And Lars is crying while driving. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And like oh, holding her hand. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Any of those three ways will work. Which I guess. way do you think is the way? Yeah. Let I'll... us know. Who's driving the Jeep in your mind? <laughs> That's the listener question <laughs> of the week. Who's driving the Jeep in your mind? All we know is that Lee is going to help Elisa be a real robot again and not a mangled piece of trash. Tekken 7. We're moving on Whoa. to Tekken 7. Wait a second. What? I thought Raven wasn't in Tekken 7. He still makes a brief appearance. Tekken 7, 2017. Let's talk about Master Raven for a minute here. Master Raven is Raven's superior officer. She's a lady version of Raven, so she's got all of his ninjutsu <laughs> style moves. She's also got a sword, so she's a ninjutsu user with a sword and teleportation attacks and stuff. Kind of like Victor. She doesn't really have any story relevance in Tekken 7, and even in her character ending, it's just her defeating Dragunov. When she beats Dragunov, she mentions that Raven needs to be retrained because he couldn't handle this mission, apparently. Oh my goodness. So he is either off retraining or recovering or 
something, but he is briefly mentioned okay. in her character ending. One other thing I wanted to mention about Tekken 7. In the game files, Master Raven is listed as FRV, all caps, and that stands for Female Raven. Okay. <laughs> okay. So that was their idea all along. They just wanted uh-huh. to have an updated ninjutsu user. Okay. So Fair enough. Yeah, there you go. You know, um, I never really played I never really got into Master Raven in uh Tekken Seven, but it's kinda of funny I. that I really thought Raven was cool. Yeah, yeah. I felt like she was just like too technical and like the sword was too flashy. I don't know mm-hmm. what it was exactly. Something mm-hmm. about choosing her. It just never felt right. Tekken eight, twenty twenty four. Raven is back. And with him comes the leader of the entire Raven unit. Mr. Codenames Are For Kids, Victor Chevalier. Yeah, you thought we were done with this guy because we were done talking about the story. So why would he come back, right? Well, yeah, we got a little bit more Victor talk coming up here. <laughs> so sorry about it. I thought this might surprise you a little bit. Okay. I, didn't, I didn't tell you this was going to be a multi-character episode. It's, it's all the Ravens. Victor Chevalier. The Phantom Raven, the leader of the Raven units. We get a little bio on Raven's absence in Tekken 7. He basically decided, I need to retrain, gather my chi, refocus, and get even better, basically. I need to get good. I need to train. The top brass of the UN, which is actually the UN, are the ones that are like the overseers or whatever of the Raven unit. Well, the top brass admires Raven's resolve and accepts his request to go train. Their approval comes with a condition. They will only cover his absence for half a year. Aiming to maximize his results in a limited time frame, Raven decides to focus on honing the arts he already excels at, rather than learning new tactics like swords or whatever, you know? Okay. Months pass, and he masters a new art, Shadow Clone just as he receives orders to return. Thus, Raven leaves the training grounds behind, anticipating the new battle that awaits him. That's kind of his pre-Tekken 8 game bio that was on the website. Okay. I thought that was pretty cool, though. Let's talk about Victor a little bit as well. Codename Phantom Raven. He is the founder of the UN-backed Raven unit. Mr. Codenames are for kids. The original Raven. The Phantom Raven. The original butthead. Yeah, right. Honestly. Some likes for Victor Chevalier. Elegant clothing. (laughs) Okay. And Raven. That's it. And his dislikes. Sergei Dragunov. Kazuya Mishima. G Corporation. I have uh, probably the longest thing I'm ever going to read about Victor. Oh, no. Right now. Just I'm going to read it. Straight through. Straight through. No stops. Descended from a lineage of distinguished knights, Victor has dreamed of rescuing those in need ever since he was a boy. Following in the footsteps of his father, a high-ranking naval officer, Victor enlists in the French Navy. Viewed as riding the coattails of his successful father by jealous peers, Victor was sent into dangerous operating zones again and again, Still, thanks to his time he spent diligently training with his father's mercenary friend from the East, Victor is able to use his knowledge of combat to come back from every mission alive and victorious. Famous for his penny-pinching nature and the long list of broken hearts he's left in his wake, Victor leaves a trail of rumors and stories wherever he goes. I'm not buying it. Okay, this sounds like something that Victor wrote about himself. <laughs> yeah, right? Doesn't it? Yeah, it honestly does. Before long, though. There's more? Yeah, there's a little more. Oh my god. I thought it was over. <laughs> no, there's more. I told you it was <laughs> no! the longest Victor thing oh I ever am going to say on the show. Before he knows it, Victor earns himself the code name Phantom Raven, and is looked upon with both fear and awe by others in the military. Victor leaves the Navy to join the UN hoping to find a way to help even more people as well as explore new paths outside the constraints of working for the state. (laughs) Okay. Okay. So, and that's where he decides to do his Raven unit thing. 
Give me a team of well-trained ninjas and sword users. Let me do things that are outside the law. And they said yes to that. That's it for that. Thank yeah. God. Any thoughts on that? Any thoughts well, on the ladies' man, Victor? Yeah, I firmly the believe this is... penny-pinching ladies' man? All handwritten by Victor about himself. All of my friends at school bullied me because they said that I was just riding on the coattails of my great dad. Yeah, and I got sent to the worst battle zones because they thought that I was just a pampered little French boy. Leaving stories and rumors wherever he goes? I don't think They're so. They're trying to get us to think that this dude is James Bond. No way. They really are. So that's the backstory of Victor that we know. Yeah. yeah, that's the one he wrote for us to know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about their endings. I want to talk about both of their endings in Tekken 8. Okay. So I watched them both, and they both take place in the same spot on the deck of this submarine. <laughs> oh. Because you can, I guess you can walk on the top of it before it goes underwater. Mm-hmm. Victor casually strolls down the deck of a giant submarine. There are two guards that are on it. And he just tells them to stand down, even though they think it's kind of weird because they can see three super spy looking soldier dudes that just roped down from a helicopter onto the deck. And they approach Victor and he just like kind of methodically takes them down one after another. Okay. So it's kind of weird that he told those guys like, don't worry, I got this. Because they were just, they drew their guns. They were just going to shoot the guys. Mm Mm-hmm. But he just, like, methodically takes them down with his little tiny knives or whatever. And then strolls off and is kind of like, see ya, I've got a date to catch. And the two guards that were there that were kind of being guards, you know what I mean? That got, <laughs> yeah. That got shooed away by Victor. They ask Raven, who also happens to be there, are all Frenchmen like this? Do they all use, like, submarines and helicopters and stuff to impress ladies because this was clearly all just a show for her to see how cool of a dude he was because he just does this sweet super spy shit and then walks off and goes on a date you know what i mean oh my god yeah yeah so raven's just like gruffly responds no just him just victor Victor. yeah just victor he's just an asshole (laughs) let's talk about raven's ending let's get out of the victor yeah, territory let's get it out of there that's all too we much need victor's from... here too much victor you never thought i was gonna have a victor centric character story yeah feeling queasy like i've been stuck on a submarine with an old man well let's get back to raven then shall we yeah <laughs> so raven meets up with victor on the deck God of... damn it. On, the... <laughs> on the deck of this submarine he meets up with victor And the two of them have kind of a mock duel. And then eventually one of the times there's like a little like poof of smoke and Victor's like teleported away. And he's left this note on the floor in front of Raven. So Raven picks up this little note and reads it. And it says, Raven is dead. And he reads this and he's like, what is, what does it mean? He questions it. He's like, Raven is dead. I love that. (laughs) What does this mean? And then Victor walks up and he's holding like a calligraphy brush in front of him with ink and then he gestures at raven's arm and raven looks at his arm and there's fresh ink on it oh my and it says mentor it's like a kanji symbol for mentor so he's what? like yeah so he's like what is this what is what first off why did you paint on me bro that's kind of weird right you're just yeah. looking like stunned yeah he like did a little calligraphy brush thing yeah raven is dead and i painted on his arm Well, Raven questions this, and Victor states that Raven is ready to lead the unit. That was a weird way to promote I know, right? Yeah, so he says that Raven is ready to lead the Raven unit, and will from now on be known as the codename Great Raven. So Raven is getting an upgraded, new and improved codename, Great Raven. Yeah, so there you go. Plus, Victor's got to get out of here. He can't do the, the team leader thing anymore. He's got a lady waiting for him back at port. That's what he says? Yeah. Oh. So Raven is now Great Raven, and Victor is now kind of piecing out, I guess. This feels like they're setting Raven up for future comebacks, and it also kind of makes it feel like maybe Victor is just a one-off, one-time character. Man, I hope and I pray. (laughs) 
Cross my fingers tight. Yeah, I wonder if we'll never see him again in like Tekken 9 and onward. And I could see him being a one-off character because he was voiced by Vincent Cassell. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Maybe they can't get him all the time. So it's just a one-off deal. But Let's go with that. Yeah, let's go with that. But as of right now, they're really just pushing Raven. Great Raven. Pretty good Raven is up next. When they get like a new person. (laughs) Raven's not going to have any idea what to call him. Decent Raven. Okay, Raven. He's going to probably just like make shit hard for people. He seems like such a serious dude. Anyways, let's talk about a few other appearances. Okay. Raven and other media. He's in Tech and Tag Tournament 2. He has special partnerships with Yoshimitsu and Kunimitsu, both the other ninjas. In Street Fighter Cross Tekken... He is in that game, and his tag partner is Yoshimitsu. Funny. Yeah. He keeps getting paired up with yeah. Yoshimitsu, even though they're rivals. Those Everyone else that bit. experiences Tekken from the outside, they're like, oh, they go together. Yeah, they go best, together. They're best friends. Yeah, they're BFFs. I also wanted to say that Raven's crossover costume looks like Guy from Final Fight. Hmm. The uh, ninja that Kimberly is kind of based on. Mm-hmm. He wears like a reddish-orange gi with... Some sort of kanji on the chest. Oh. And yeah, his crossover costume is that. So Raven is just wearing kind of a Street Fighter style classic ninja outfit. Sounds cool. Yeah, it's kind of neat. And not only that, Street Fighter character Rolento, the guy that uses a baton and grenades and has a backpack, Mm -hmm. has a Raven crossover skin. It's an all white with gold emblems, tight stealth suit (laughs) sort of thing. Okay. Because between five and six, Raven went from, like, black outfit to, like, white outfit. Tekken the Movie, 2010. This is a live-action movie that I feel like, after reading a little bit about it, I really, really, really want to watch with you. (laughs) Because it sounds bonkers. Yeah, Raven is in this movie for, like, a two-minute fight scene where he beats the crap out of Eddie Gordo during during the tournament. Okay. Just wins. That's all we see of him in the movie. He just beats Eddie Gordo. But yeah, we definitely need to see this, though, because I saw another clip on YouTube, and I didn't even want to watch the whole thing because I didn't want to spoil it for myself, but Kazuya is in it, mm-hmm. and he was wielding two hand axes. That's all yeah. of Raven. Wow. I thought it was a lot of fun learning all this about Raven. Before we go, we mentioned that this was a surprise to me. I didn't know who you were going to choose, aside from the fact that I was going to be a Tekken character. And right. what was your process? How did you decide? I decided I wanted to do someone that was in Tekken 8, and I kind of had the idea, what if I did Raven, but I just included the rest of the Raven unit, and kind of did like a a little bit of a three-in-one, because I've done, you know, the Animals of Tekken in the past and combined them before. Mm -hmm. My other idea was Claudio and Zafina, the two magic users. Yeah, just together. Just a magic-centric episode. Yeah. Because Zafina has only been around in 6, 7, 8, and Claudio has only been around in 7, seven. and 8. So it wouldn't have been too extreme either. But Yeah. I'm glad that you ended up going with the Raven theme because it had a really weird synchronicity for me <laughs> with the trio there. But yeah, yeah, for sure. Cool. Well, thanks for bringing all the Raven info. Yeah, definitely. I thought this was fun, and I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about him through me i knew there were definitely some things that were going to get you just absolutely heated (laughs) oh you were right uh victor (laughs) yeah victor Victor being a piece of shit just over and over being around yeah just victor like neck breathing behind anyone that has (laughs) any sort of power just like hey can i have that will you pay for me to live in a submarine (laughs) indefinitely (laughs) the captain of this submarine hates his job he's like man I just drive this thing around, different ports, dropping and picking up this old, sleazy French dude. Looks like Colonel Sanders. And he smells like shit. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you for joining us on another episode of Wake Up 3. You can follow along on Twitter at WakeUp3FGC or on YouTube and Spotify at WakeUp3. I'm your host, Cam, and you can find me at Big Ruck Online on all social media. And I'm your host, Molly, and you can find me on Twitter at Concut, that's K-A-H-N-K-U-T.
or on PlayStation. That's Jam Michaels. This is Wake Up 3 signing off. Bye. I got my hands inside the vehicle. Um, seat back upright, whatever. I'm ready to take off into MK1. <laughs> like, beyond. I got my hands inside the vehicle. <laughs> is that a saying? Yeah, like yeah, they keep I like guess... all say like keep your hands and legs. Oh, I okay. Legs. I was just picturing like a car of some kind. <laughs>